Why would a Democrat vote for this guy? They, they didn't. Democrats, they don't need Democrat votes to win, uh, to, to become the speaker. They need f uh, at least, they need near unanimous uh, votes from all Republicans. Specifically, uh, I think like the, the amount of votes they can lose from Republicans right now is four. And they got it. Um, well, you know, here's a telehealth measure. BetterHelp.com is here to save you. Resources being poured into this search right now. Charles Marino and Elaine Cano, thank you so much. Well, the new Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, spoke to reporters about the shooting in May. Well, let's get into Mike Johnson, okay? I got to go pee real quick, but let's talk about Mike Johnson. Mike Cock, okay? America Mr. Johnson. Has a new House Speaker, Louisiana. Fucking insane moment. And a congressman, Mike Johnson, was sworn in yesterday after three weeks of the U.S. House of Representatives being left in limbo without an official leader. But Johnson may have his work cut out for him, unifying a fractured Republican Party that ousted the former speaker and rejected three nominees for the top job. Our Scott McFarlane is on Capitol Hill and joins me now with the latest. Good morning, Scott. And Marie, good morning. This time yesterday, Mike Johnson was a little known congressman from Western Louisiana. This morning, he is second in line to the U.S. presidency. And it all happened so quickly, Johnson's wife couldn't get here in time for the big moment. 56th Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, the Honorable Mike Johnson. Congressman Mike Johnson is in just his fourth term, but Wednesday, the 51-year-old former radio talk host and attorney moved into the Speaker's office. We, we went through a lot to get here, uh, but, but we are ready to govern, and that will begin right away. Moments after Johnson's election, the House approved a resolution denouncing the attack on Israel. But tougher votes are coming. Johnson has previously opposed more U.S. aid for Ukraine, an issue that fiercely divides Republicans. Johnson has opposed abortion rights and supports a nationwide abortion ban without exceptions. And last month, he voted against a deal cut with Democrats to keep the government open. Now Johnson faces a November 17th deadline to again avoid a shutdown. I love this guy. Um, he's, <laughs> he's so cool, man. <laughs> he is fucking insane, dog. Okay. He is out of his fucking dome. Why did Dems vote for this guy but voted to... Wait, what? Why did Dems vote for this guy but voted to oust McCarthy? What do you mean voted for this guy? You mean why did the Republicans vote for this guy? He only emerged after Congressman Tom Emmer who voted to certify... Why would a Democrat vote for this guy? They, they didn't. Democrats... They don't need Democrat votes to win, uh, to, to become the speaker. They need f uh, at least... They need near unanimous uh, votes from all Republicans. Specifically, uh, I think like the the amount of votes they can lose from Republicans right now is four, and they got it. It's not, but but the reality is, yeah, they need all Republicans minus four. But um, What's wild is like they were like Jim Jordan is a pervert and 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 you know uh did not investigate rapes that were happening under his watch like it was happening literally right around him all around him and he's a bad guy and he's also a freedom caucus guy but then they're like but this guy who's his like who he's mentored he's fine like all of the moderates that fucking claimed that they did not want Jim Jordan because, like, he's too much of an extremist, literally turned around and voted for this guy, who is also an extremist. If you think Jim Jordan is, like, single-handedly the only responsible party for, like, the January 6th stuff, well, this guy was right alongside him the entire way. So, it makes no fucking sense. I guess they just were, like... And he's also, like, a real zealot, too. Like, Jim Jordan is a freak, okay? He's a wrestling guy. That's one thing. This guy who doesn't have the same name recognition that Jim Jordan has, or at least like the same long uh, commitment to like being an obstructionist in the Freedom uh, Party and the Freedom Caucus, the Tea Party Caucus uh, in, in Congress, still very much is a fucking 
unadulterated freak. An absolute freak, dude. He is a real uh, Mike Pence style podcaster slash uh, Christian fascist. He also was one of the people that that uh, f- tried to change the results in four of the states uh, in order to secure a victory for Donald Trump. And he was the one who whipped the votes in the Republican caucuses at the behest of Donald Trump and Jimothy Jordan. He's a full-blown Christofash, okay? Straight up. Absolute freak. Here. Here you go, dude. Here. Because a democracy is... You know, we don't live in a democracy. Because a democracy is two wolves and a lamb deciding what's for dinner, okay? It's not just majority rule. It's a constitutional republic. And the founders set that up because they followed the biblical admonition on what a civil society is supposed to be. I love, oh, dude, he, yeah, that's sick. That, there you go. There you go. There you go, baby. This guy is a real fucking psycho, dude. He's like Sharia law. <laughs> I wish it was Christian Sharia law. He's, he reminds me of like the Quran guys uh, that I remember laughing at when I was growing up in Turkey that would do like, that would basically uh, do the, the, the math stuff in the surahs, right? They would be like, oh, this is what the Quran predicted. You know, the, the backronym of, of uh, the post hoc rationalization that is completely ahistoric. Uh, that, like, the founding fathers actually loved the Bible and they, they used the Bible to fucking design the American government. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> to look like. You know, we don't live in a democracy because a democracy is two wolves and a lamb deciding what's for dinner. He's got way more, dude. He's got because he has a podcast, so he has Some so much more. In the late sixties, you remember that what that was about? The counterculture revolution, Woodstock, and drugs, and peace, and free love, and all that. But more about the undermining of the foundations of religion and morality. Because you, if you remember, in the late sixties, we invented things like no fault divorce laws. We invented uh, the sexual revolution. We invented um, uh, radical <laughs> feminism. We invented legalized. <laughs> we invented radical feminism, like. Uh, that's when we invented it guys you don't understand before that no feminism women famously did not advocate for their best interest before the 1960s <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh my fucking head hurts. Oh my god. I don't want to hear from fucking stupid ass, dumb ass, bum ass, Mickey Mouse rings ass, John Fetterman about the new speaker or anybody ever again, okay? Mr. fucking, Mr. Clean ass, head ass, loving genocide ass, bitch. Old fuck ass motherfucker. Wear a suit, okay? Fuck that guy, okay? I'm fucking done with this bitch ass. You understand me? Straight up. Bitch. Stupid ass bitch. Fucking, oh, the Hamas. Oh, it's really bad. Oh, I'm so scared of Hamas. Stupid fucking bitch. I'm telling John you said that. What a fucking disappointment he's been, dude. John Fetter, bitch. Six foot, six foot eight. Yeah, fucking got a head transplant. And then look at him now. Took him like three and a half seconds to be like, yeah, actually, yo, fuck all this progress shit. He was always like kind of shitty on on Israel to begin with. But God damn, dude, he's just fucking out of control. He's like almost at the level of Richie Torres. Like he's not. Is he's, I mean, here, you want to know why I fucking despise John Fetterman now, dude? Here, I'll show you what this John Fetter bitch. Not John Fetter man, John Fetter bitch, okay? Someone has the, someone has the goddamn fucking Twitter post, the video uh, with, with Pod Save America. He had the fucking Pod Johns. He was on with the Pod Johns, and he's like talking about Hamas. Here, you want to know? Hold on. 
Got it? Oh, here it is. Here, watch. watch. This is the brilliant mind of John Fetterman. That Hamas doesn't want peace. You know, it's to remember that Hamas doesn't want peace. He doesn't want to be negotiated with or, I mean, and, you know, they, you know, innocent children, women, and now they have over 200 hostages with them right now as well, too. So, um. Motherfucker said Hamas and then said he. Like, who's... Who's bro talking to? I, I really believe that I'm always going to decide to stand on the side of Israel, you know, in this place. And, and, and also after the, the hospital tragedy, uh, now everyone now we know that it was, I guess, Islamic Jihad. And they tried to blame it on Israel on top of that as well, too. Comp <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. I can't, I, I can't believe it, man. That's, that's so crazy. This is the, this is the top mind, dude. This is the top mind on, on Israel, boys. You know what I mean? Fucking old head transplant ass bitch. Fucking dumb bitch. Fuck this guy. I can't believe it, dude. I, I just like... He... Oh, my God. My, your big boy Goodwill disappeared instantly? Yeah, fucking get on Ozempic, bitch ass. I don't want you to be a fucking big boy no more, okay? Disrespectful ass motherfucker. Disrespectful to the big boy cause, dude. Yeah. Love that. Love, love it. Uh, Hamas, guys, he, he doesn't want peace with us. Like, uh, Hamas is, is fucking is, is scary. It's in every fucking corner. And also, I can't believe they blamed Israel for the hospital bombing. How fucked up was that? Am I right? And people are like, yeah, you're right. 6,000 bombs. 6,000 missiles. 7,000. Palestinians have been ruthlessly slaughtered and this fucking Mr. Clean looking ass Frankenstein's monster ass bitch is over there being like, oh, I can't believe it. They, it was Islamic Jihad. They blamed Israel. How fucked up. I choose to believe that the QAnon schizos are saying that he's been replaced. All right. Yes, they replaced his fucking brain, dude. They did. The QAnon schizos were right. He had a head transplant. He must have. I swear to God, bro, you fucking go to Harvard, you just like, you literally become this genocidal monster, I think. Like, what the fuck is happening? His upbringing helped him get an MBA from the University of Connecticut and a master's degree from Harvard without taking on student debt. He got his undergraduate degree at Albert College in reading. Yeah. He did. I was right. Gazan children have died in three weeks, comparable to all Israeli deaths, including military. What? Yeah, no, more than that. More children in Gaza have died than, than the Israeli deaths. What are you talking about? T twice, double the amount. There's 2,900 children that have died in Gaza so far. Pounding that. And I was disappointed by a lot of the, out, uh, the media outlets that now kind of pushed that narrative. Man, shut the fuck up. Stupid ass bald bitch. Fuck this guy. Dr. Oz would free Palestine? No, he wouldn't. No, he fucking wouldn't. That's what you get for choosing to back him instead of your countrymen? Yeah, I know, I know. I fucked up. I should have fucking bet on the Turk. You know what I mean? I can't believe how much I fucking pushed for this guy. Oh my God, I'm so mad. I, I just, I can't fucking believe it, dude. Dude, he had a stroke. Literally, when you have brain damage, you tend to lean more right wing. It's like a known thing. Who cares what JF thinks about Israel Palestine? Let's hope he remembers to keep pushing all the progressive policies in the state in the state that he ran on. <laughs> Did he flop on his Israel stance? No, he was always like the difference. Is, he didn't flip flop on his Israel stance, but at least he was like not really as aggro for the longest time. So I could just like avoid talking about it or avoid thinking about it, and. Uh, since October 7th, he hasn't shut the fuck up. Like, he's he's become one of those guys who's like, I don't give a fuck about anything right now. I just, like, we got to do uh, critical and uncritical support, unconditional support to Israel right now, every day of my life. Is there a large Jewish-Israeli population in Pennsylvania? I mean, yes, uh, in comparison to other places, certainly. I mean, that's literally where Bibi Netanyahu's from. Bibi Netanyahu's from Pennsylvania. He's from Philadelphia, okay? Benjamin Netanyahu is from fucking Philadelphia. Just remember that shit. Pittsburgh is the second largest Jewish co community in the country. Like, I don't even know. I don't even know what the, uh, what the attitude towards Israel is there, by the way. I don't know. I don't know how conservative the, the uh, Jews are in, in uh, Pittsburgh. So, like, um, that much I don't know about. 
okay? But I will tell you this much. Like, like for example, there's certain parts. Like in New York, the, the, the Orthodox community in New York is incredibly right-wing, okay? Like, it, there's pockets. But uh, mostly there, I, I suspect most of the most of the Jewish people are like reform uh, Jews. I know that Benjamin Netanyahu in his own personal development was frustrated by how many fucking reform Jews were there. Uh, and that's like how he became even more of a radical psychotic piece of shit in, in uh, Philadelphia. Like the church, the church, the, 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 the synagogue that they went to was like a reform one and he fucking hated it. <laughs> Dr. Oz was attacking Fetterman for being too anti-Israel during his campaign. Yeah. The real reason why the likes of of fucking monkeys like John Fetterman and and the other ones that fucking are like unconditional support for Israel, please, please, please don't do anything to me, is because the Democratic majority for Israel and APAC literally are psychopathic fucking freaks that run campaigns expressly against anyone and everyone that's progressive, okay, in the Democratic Party. They're like, they are psychos. Bro, the Democratic majority for Israel tried to run a campaign smearing Bernie Sanders as an anti-Semite. Okay? Like, they're, they're insane. They're unhinged. They're fucking psychotic. But that's the major reason why so many people are, are fucking terrified of saying anything. And just like, you know, they just do whatever the fuck they can. They just be like, oh, please, please don't run. Uh, you know, please don't try to primary me. I don't want to fucking fight a primary battle in an otherwise safe district. ...abortion in 1973, where, the, where the, the state, the government, sanctions the killing of the unborn. All these things happen because as collectively as Americans, we began to get together in, in growing numbers and thumb our nose at the creator and say, we don't believe that anymore. We're rejecting the founder's natural law philosophy in favor of moral relativism, and we are going down another path. Now, what we tolerate in moderation, our children excuse in excess. What happens when you fast forward another 30 or 40 years? Well, here's a picture's worth a thousand words. Go to the next one for me. I mean, we know that we're living in a completely amoral society. And so people say, how can a young person go into their schoolhouse and open fire on their classmates? Because we've taught a whole generation, a couple of generations now of Americans, that there is no right and wrong, that it's about survival of the fittest, and you evolve from the primordial slime. Why is that life of any sacred value? Because there's nobody sacred to whom it's owed. None of this should surprise us. And it leads in, in the next slide for me, it leads into just uh, chaos. Uh, if he's an election denier, can he be too brought up on charges? I think he was more of like a, like a background constitutional aspect guy. Here's Speaker Mike Hawk on a. Let me ask you, do you support the right of a woman who is just seconds away from birthing a healthy child to have an abortion? I think that the question that you're asking, asking does not realistically reflect abortion care. In that in scenario, the would, you would you support her right to abort that child? I won't entertain theoreticals. It's not a theoretical, ma'am. You're a medical... Dude, what do you mean? Like, if the fucking... If the... the uh, if there is a... If there is a serious complication to the health of the carrier, then yes. It doesn't fucking matter. Like, what... In, in that circumstance, that means the carrier is going to die, dumbass. And that's the only valid reason anyway. There's no place in the continental United States where you can just get a fucking aborabo on the third trimester for funsies, okay? This does not exist. It only exists in your fucking fantasies, you absolute monstrous freak. Yeah, I said aborabo, like it's like like a fun thing, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not a, a, a abortion. We're just we're we're making it fun for the shits and gigs, you know. Sociopathic weirdo, dude. There is no place in every fucking state where uh, you can get an abortion past the first trimester, where ninety percent of abortions happen any fucking way, right? You get it. Because there are health complications. You get it because the fetus will not survive. You get it because the carrier will not survive a pregnancy being carried to term. That's it. That's it. And these fucking monstrous pieces of shit act like, you know, they're just, 
they're just literally doctors are like chopping babies uh, right as their head comes out of the pussy. You know what I mean? They're like, uh, we put the little guillotine, a baby, uh, a, a pussy guillotine, right as soon as the baby is getting pushed out, pff, chop the head. Like that in this in this medieval contraption. You know what I mean? Like, is that what you think is going on? You fucking freak. You fucking monster. Fuck you. Well, doctor. I am a medical doctor, and that has never happened. Never happened in your care. practice, ma'am, but it, it happens. How about if... No, it hasn't! <laughs> Pussy guillotine is crazy, Avi. I mean, that's what he's envisioning. He's saying, like, what if a baby is two seconds away from being born? What about then? Like, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? It would be murder if the baby comes out and is alive and the doctor kills the baby. That's murder, okay? That's a different thing. Why is it that we can't have the fucking conversation on the grounds of reality, which is already horrifying for millions of women in this country? Why can't we talk about the real issues of criminalizing abortion and instead have to drive the conversation into a hypothetical that does not fucking happen? What are we doing here? I'm sorry. I'm not like an r slash atheist Andy by any means whatsoever, but like, I don't give a fuck what your perspective is on this matter. You know what I mean? I just, it's fucking ridiculous. Oh yeah, let's entertain your fucking schizophrenic uh, hi hypotheticals right now. Like, that's cool. There is no difference. There is no difference in this circumstance than just being like, what if it was baby Hitler? Like, if the, if the doctor turned around and was like, well, what if that baby turned out to be Hitler? Huh? Huh? I see your hypothetical and I raise a separate hypothetical. What if that baby was about to come out and, and uh, you know, have access to the nuclear launch codes and destroy the entire planet? Would you be grateful that I killed the baby? Fucking idiot, dude. If a child is halfway out of the birth canal, is an abortion permissible then? See, don't, he's doing it. You said I'm crazy for the, for the pussy guillotine thing. Please. Please, am I crazy for the pussy guillotine or is he fucking crazy for bringing this up as though it's like a, like a viable situation? Wow, I'm crazy, right? Well, that guy's the speaker of the house now. He's third in line, okay? Well, technically second in line to the presidency. Think about that. What if the baby's house halfway outside the pussy? Can you kill it, Dan? Can you repeat your question? If a child is halfway delivered out of the birth canal, is it permissible to have an abortion? Would you support the right for an abortion then? I can't even fathom that ever. And I'm not asking you if you can fathom it. If it occurred, would you support that abortion or not? That's unrestricted I abortion, right? That's a question that I can't imagine. I, just like you probably can't imagine what you would do if your daughter was raped. If it hasn't happened, it may be okay. difficult for you. You're to not going to answer this question, question, but let me ask so you. Do, do you Debate lording doctors, dude. That's awesome. If you lend your 16-year-old child a family car and they bring it home dented, it's okay to abort them. Just answer the question. Is it okay to abort them? Just answer the question. Just answer it. Why do you want children to be murdered? He also said that people owe their rights to God. Oh, God. This guy is so crazy. He's sitting in the greatest deliberative body in the world, the United States Congress, mm -hmm. and to hear elected representatives of the people, you know, every member of Congress, every member of the House represents roughly 760,000 citizens, right. right? So there's a singular voice on behalf of all those people, and some of these voices now are in this chamber arguing that our rights do not come from God. Mm -hmm. how you know, think about how scary that is. If you, if you believe your rights come from government, then it means you don't really owe any allegiance at all to God. Yeah. You have no accountability. Well, to you're not that. free. You're not free because the people who are governing you and giving you things in exchange for those things mm -hmm. always comes a sacrifice of your liberty. Absolutely. Genuine question, is this guy really this fucked up or is he grifting? Uh, this guy's the scariest of both outcomes. He's a Mike Pence type. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, not only is he a Mike Pence type, but he's also a more competent Mike Pence type. So he's like the worst of the worst type of freak who legitimately believes the shit that he's spewing. Um, he is a real 
hardcore, unironic Christian fascist, okay? Straight up. He's not like, this is not a joke. There are a lot of people that, you know, there are a lot of people that act like they care about Christianity or whatever the fuck, you know what I mean? Uh, this guy's not one of them. He's like a Mike Pence type where he's like, no, I want to fucking criminalize abortion. Yeah, casual racism is back. Yeah, I know. I saw that. Problem solved. You're welcome. How to stop Hamas. Sexy goat. Atomic bomb. Trigger. Get it? Because, like, Arabs are goat fuckers. Like, if you didn't understand it because you weren't around for, like, the post-9-11 uh, Islamophobia, casual Islamophobia. Like, yeah, this is this is straight up from 2001. I think he just, like, took Al-Qaeda and, like, put Hamas instead on the top. Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. Silver lining, he pushes moderates left. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. All those moderates voted for him because ultimately the thing that they hated about Jim Jordan was that he's Jim Jordan. They literally got, they said no to Jim Jordan and then they went and got like the one guy who's more competent than Jim Jordan and voted for him. So it doesn't matter. There's no better way to demonstrate that, like, the Republican Party is perfectly fine with uh, the the uh, acceleration towards full blown Christian fashion, uh, Christian fascism, Christian nationalist fascism, uh, than than moments like this. This is Jim Jordan's own guy. He's literally Jim Jordan without the sexual baggage, okay, without the rape baggage. Mike Johnson is the type of Republican Bible sexual freak who can only nut with a loaded gun in his mouth while he jacks off the graphs and polls. Exactly. Exactly. He's the self-flagellating type, okay? You know his ass. You know his ass is just like every... He's like every time a, a, every time a, a 14-year-old rape victim has to carry a pregnancy to term, that's, a, that's another uh, one of God's favorite childs. Okay, I did it. I did it right. Straight up. That's the type of, uh, that's the type of motherfucker he is. He's just crazy. Thomas Jefferson said he viewed the solemn reverence of the act of the whole American people, which established a wall of separation between church and state. George Washington approved a treaty that explicitly stated the government of the United States is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion. Yes, everybody knows the founding fathers were Muslim. Okay? Fun fact, they said the Shahada together and converted, or reverted rather. Everybody knows this. Taylor made evangelical politicians just like a wild car for not getting a goddamn thing done. What? This guy does not believe it. This guy thinks that uh, it, it, there is no such thing as like a secular separation of church and state. Oh, here's some more good shit. He says, oh, from the same video. What that was about. The countercultural revolution. Was Wait, we watched this, didn't How can a young person... Wait, did he say in that video that we watched, he said the school shootings uh, uh, were due to teaching, the evolu teaching evolution in schools? Oh, because he said when you teach kids, they come from primordial slime. They just do school shootings. Got it. Yeah. So, uh, let's hear it. Let's hear it. He got more. She spent the last... Uh couple of weeks on her knees in prayer to the lord and um she's a little worn out yeah this is the type of motherfucker he is okay no he is he like doesn't even understand that that's a sexual reference like in his mind he thinks like that's the only time i'm on my knees what do you mean like he doesn't get that that what he said is just like inherently uh uh acting like his wife sucked everyone's dicks in congress to vote for him like, he, he doesn't understand that. This is 1230 tomorrow. What are you going to do to me? Are you going to kill me? What's happening? What do you mean 1230 tomorrow? What's, what's going on on 1230 tomorrow? Ugh. Wife is going to suck you at 1230 tomorrow? Okay, well. Well, you know. What about at 3 p.m. right now? Top of the hour ad break comes. You know, does his wife have a subscription to avoid it? I don't know. Does she? I don't know. Here's the three minute break now, though, regardless. Fine. President Biden's win dropped out amid pressure from Donald Trump. Yesterday, Trump claimed credit for Johnson's win. Nobody was thinking of Biden 
And then we put out the word, and now he's the Speaker of the House. The House Johnson now leads will take part in certifying next year's presidential election. But the new speaker backed Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 results. He promoted debunked mail fraud and voter machine conspiracy theories. And he also recruited a majority of House Republicans to sign a legal brief supporting a lawsuit seeking to overturn the vote outcome, which was rejected by the Supreme Court. He spearheaded the legal effort, your colleagues on the other side of the aisle, in support of a dangerous, and baseless lawsuit to overturn the results. And after three weeks of infighting, Johnson faces the large task of uniting Republicans. There still seems to be quite a bit of bad blood inside the conference despite this vote. This is politics. We don't pitch underhand. Johnson kept such a low profile. One U.S. senator told me he has to study up on who Mike Johnson is. Johnson is still navigating that very narrow majority in which any one faction of Republicans can block his priorities. And Anne-Marie, he's working under that same rule in which any one member can move to oust him. Uh, man, you would have thought that they would have, you know, worked on, tried to alter that rule a little bit. Yeah, I heard there was one lawmaker that said that they had to Google him to, to learn more about him. Do you think that actually maybe benefited him? I mean, he succeeded where bigger names failed. When you see a fourth-term congressman, very few people know, ascend to the speakership, you have to be certain that there's this confluence of rare events. That all it was Susan Collins that says she had to Google him? Yeah. I think that... Don't worry. What? Oh, this is where it's from. Yeah. Uh, Austin Ox finally released my TwitchCon vlog from literally one year ago. We'll watch it later. All come together at once. And one of those events is Mike Johnson's ascendancy despite his anonymity. He is little known. He was little known, which may have helped him. You know, he got the conservatives, the House Freedom Caucus members to back him because he is an evangelical Christian with a conservative record. But he also secured the votes of those moderate Republicans in those competitive districts, potentially because he's an unknown quantity and hard for his, the constituents to oppose because the constituents in those districts may have no idea who Mike Johnson is. Things came together in this weird way all at once for this congressman from Louisiana. Here's the question, though, as you, you know, you sort of point out his background. You know, this is a guy that, you know, questioned the outcome of the election. He's not going to have to just work with Republicans. He's going to have to work with Democrats, too. He's determining yeah, right. what uh, pieces of legislation come to the House floor. Is he going to be able to work in a bipartisan manner? Yeah, okay. Well, we're about to find out. He is in charge of the entire administration of the U.S. House. There are a lot of non-political duties, you know, overseeing the items that you know, involve the blocking and tackling of Congress, the police, the sergeant at arms, the administration of the offices and spaces. Um, there are some nonpartisan duties, but in terms of bipartisanship, we'll see what he has to offer because he's going to have to work with Democrats. He's going to have to if he wants to keep the government open November 17th because, yes, Democrats still control the Senate and there's a Democrat Fuck. in the White House. I sneezed so hard, my fucking lower abs cramped. Fuck. White House. If he has no muscle oh. memory or practice in working in a bipartisan fashion, he'll have to develop some quickly. And there's that aid package for Ukraine and Israel on the screen. $105 billion. There seems to be overwhelming support for Israeli aid. But Mike Johnson has a fractured Republican conference on the issue of Ukraine. They are divided over to whether to continue spending American tax dollars on Ukraine. He has to navigate that and get everybody on the same page. Um... He's a big Donald Trump supporter. Could this also be seen as a victory for the former president? Well, the former president is declaring victory. Mm. There really was <laughs> a referendum this week, wasn't there? Over 24 hours on the issue of the 2020 election. Tom Emmer, the speaker nominee, got stopped short of the finish line because Trump criticized him. Emmer voted to certify President Biden's victory. Mike Johnson did not, voted to decertify it. He didn't just make it to the finish line. He sped right past it. So, you know, is the thinking so, yes, we know that the, the president has asked for, you know, billions of dollars to support Ukraine, to support Israel. But is the thinking that the gov possible government shutdown going to be maybe his biggest test that's going to come up, what, in a, in a few weeks? 
I think it's going to be the most immediate large scale test mm. for Mike Johnson. And there's no way around the fact that he has to find a deal that satisfies Democrats. And what a tough way to start yeah. when you were succeeding somebody who was dethroned because Republicans didn't like the deal. Kevin McCarthy cut with Democrats. Mike Johnson must do the same. No. But I'll tell you Republicans just don't like Kevin McCarthy. That's why they ousted him. Why did the Dems vote for this guy? Dude, are you... De Democrats did not vote for this man. Democrats don't have to vote for this guy. There's enough Republicans because they have the majority. 217 votes is what's necessary. And he crossed that threshold. The real problem here is, why did the moderates who say no to Kevin, uh, to Jim Jordan turn around and immediately vote for this fucking guy when this guy is Jim Jordan's, like, freakish... Uh, a impish sidekick who actually is is more with it when it comes to um, understanding the legal stuff behind the scenes. I'll tell you, Anne Marie, I talked to an awful lot of Republicans walking in and out of the Capitol for that vote yesterday. It seems clear they're going to give Mike Johnson a honeymoon period and a little mm. bit more latitude at the start to cut that deal. They acknowledge there will have to be one of those continuing resolutions, one of those temporary deals to keep the government open. The same thing that enraged them when Kevin McCarthy did it. Seems like they're going to give some leash to Mike Johnson to do the same. Very interesting, Scott. Scott McFarlane, thank you.